we all know that sleep is important and we're frequently guilty of not getting enough of it because we're tempted to do, do other things like to stay up too late and <laughs> watch TV or do homework or stay on the internet or do housework or whatever it is that you do at night. It's tempting to, to stay up. But people need to realize that there are effects that are not good. And some of them we already know, like we know that it can mess with our hormones, it disrupts our uh, endocrine system. It can also lead to diabetes, it can lead to not just not feeling good. <laughs> sure, and osteoporosis and heart attacks and hypertension and strokes. We need sleep. And you know, we've mentioned so many times on this show about the study that was done by the American Cancer Society in the late 50s on a million people. And they looked at lifestyle measures and then looked at, at things like smoking and exercise or lack of it, uh, being overweight, being under stress, uh, not getting enough sleep. And what predicted mortality and morbidity more than anything else? Not getting enough sleep. Less than four hours a night of sleep would do that. And now there's a new study that just came out in the Journal of the American Medical Association showing that young men that are not getting enough sleep stop the partying <laughs> <laughs> or whatever else you're doing because it lowers testosterone significantly if they get, what, five hours sleep or less. Yeah, so it's important. Testosterone does so many good things for us. It's important <laughs> to make us strong, uh, keep us from being fatigued. It protects us against heart disease. It makes our bones strong. Uh, it gives all the all we need for libido. So it's really important to have. And, and people usually think of it just as sex. Well, yeah, then that's not unimportant. That's I mean <laughs> that's important too. But it but it's one of those things that just tells you. Sleep is so vitally important. I mean, even when you look at accidents, I mean, people get a lot more accidents because oh, of for that. Sure. And if we don't have enough testosterone, lots of things go haywire. And maybe this is a good time to look at what do we know about testosterone and, and what makes it important? We're looking, first of all, of it being produced where? In the testes, <laughs> in the ovary, believe it or not, a little bit in the adrenal gland. And what's it made from? Tricholesterol. It's one of those things Whoa. that if you don't have enough cholesterol, you can't make enough hormones and you can't make enough vitamin D either. And we look at how it's produced. We're really looking at starting with cholesterol, then it moves through some complex biochemistry that includes pregnenolone, which most people never heard of, and androstenedione, which you haven't heard of by that name so much, but it's the very thing that Mark McGuire was taking when he was hitting all those home runs in baseball. And, 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 of course, for that reason, we know a lot about it. And it's the precursor of what? Testosterone and something called dihydrotestosterone, which is even stronger. So that's enough of the biochemistry, but you need to understand a, a little bit about that. And, of course, the history of it tells you how people in, in sports are, are misusing some of these things because it leads to a lot of things that are a little bit grotesque. It's not healthy. It can lead to liver disease. It can actually cause small testes, small, small testicles, because now you're making the hormone from the outside. No need for the testes to do it anymore, so they get small and involuted. So maybe it's, kind it's of better. Ironic. If, maybe it's better if they just get enough sleep. Get enough sleep, get some exercise, <laughs> you know, and do it the natural way. There are ingredients even in skincare products that can, can reduce the amount of testosterone. Hmm. Well, we don't realize a lot of the time how many things we put in our body that cause major problems for us. Another thing that's important when it comes to sleep is that when you go into that deep REM sleep, that's when you make the testosterone. So if you don't get into that deep REM uh, sleep, chances are you're not gonna be able to make much of it. And of course, what does exercise do? It stimulates everything. I look a lot of the time at what the anti-aging doctors are talking about, and they're looking at menopause and andropause and something for thyroid and something for adrenals because as we age, we make less of it. I'll tell you, there's nothing like lifestyle to keep your hormone levels at, at places like when you were young. And when you're talking about growth hormone and you're talking about testosterone, what's the best way to rise it, make it go up? Exercise, yeah. exercise. So we have to, we have to remember about these, about these things. And, and, and really go back to thinking that we need to be in control more than we'll take responsibility for. We're more inclined to look at, at some of the things that can be done from the outside. What can your doctor do? What can the endocrinologist or the anti-aging doctor do to keep me from aging at the pace that I'm aging at? It never competes with lifestyle. 
because you know many times as people age their concentration isn't as good and they're always looking for this you know silver bullet to, sure. to help them but this is where the sleep comes in with the testosterone because the testosterone can also affect your concentration and also if you don't get enough of it it's uh, it ages you like 10 to 15 years more exactly so the exercise is huge so if you want to protect for uh, testosterone production exercise is big another thing that interferes with uh, uh, testosterone levels is a low level of zinc. If you don't have enough zinc in your diet, particularly if you're a vegetarian, you might be thinking that a, a zinc supplement would be a good idea for you. And what about women? Don't w women produce some testosterone? Absolutely. They, they, we men make about 10 times as much as you women do, but as usual, you're more sensitive to it. And of course, it has a lot to do with libido. And so sometimes we tend to blame it on low testosterone levels, but what we really need to do is look at the whole person and all the factors that are involved and what makes a woman want to have sex. And it's not, it's not just a low testosterone level. Of course, if she takes too much testosterone. That becomes a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and she yeah. grows a mustache or something. Well, that's right. That's <laughs> Her right. partner might not have <laughs> such a good libido. <laughs> Whenever you're, you're messing around with hormones, you're playing with fire because you're, you're using things that have very, very powerful effects on the body and on its metabolism. And there are a lot of undesired effects from them when they're used in mega doses. So you have to be careful, not just with drugs, uh, but with natural products as well. A couple of other factors that we should probably pay attention to because they're related to testosterone metabolism are things like licorice, licorice and spearmint tea. They slightly decrease uh, the amount of testosterone that we have in our body. Interesting. So. What you eat, uh, eat a regular diet. Again, stay away from the excesses. It's the excesses of anything that get us into trouble. We tend to do that in medicine a lot because we're looking for that silver bullet. And if a little bit works, maybe a lot of work better. And when you look at a metabolic pathway chart that looks at cellular biochemistry inside of a little microscopic cell, it'll blow your mind at what we know. It'll probably blow your mind more we at what we know. don't know. <laughs> There are thousands of reactions going on all the time. When you take one substance, one chemical, and you put it in the body in mega dose levels, in massive doses, that leads to problems. It, it's inevitable that it's going to lead to problems, even though you may get a few desired effects from it. The best thing, stick with your lifestyle. We know that that's what we need the most if we're going to live a healthy life. Because many times it's like we're, we or our doctors are trying to play God. Well, you know? that, that's what it boils down to. And to offset the balance a little bit, thinking that they're fixing the balance. And sometimes they don't really know what they're doing. Exactly. I mean, it's sort of like when you take supplements and you look at a whole food, like a whole orange or a whole tomato or sure. whatever it is, and you take maybe the lycopene out of the tomato or right. you take the vitamin C out, out, of, of, an the, orange. out of the orange. But... It really is different than when you eat the whole food together because there are other things in there that work together. It's just like the fructose that's in the uh, that's in, in the orange. Yeah. I mean, when it's balanced with the other things, the other nutrients that are in that whole orange, it's a lot different than if you just took fructose separately on its own. That is such a good point. And what I will liken this to is an orchestra. How would you do in an orchestra if all of a sudden you wanted to have good bass? So you brought in a thousand bass drums <laughs> and you start playing your orchestra. All you'd be hearing is drums and the violins and the trumpets and all the other instruments that were there would be drowned out. The same thing happens when we start doing that with the biochemistry of the body. So you put in mega doses of anything, you're asking for trouble. So when we're looking at, at, at simple things like testosterone and relating it to sleep, it doesn't mean go out and start supplementing with mega doses of testosterone. I mean, there are some people who definitely will benefit from that, particularly as we get older and we have maybe a deficiency of it that's significant. But who wants to get less than five hours sleep a night anyway? Exactly. Anybody's going to feel tired and fatigued and have sure. some of these other symptoms anyway. So Unless you're unusual, what you need to keep yourself healthy is a healthy lifestyle. Eat right, get rid of your stress as much as you can, See if you can get as much sleep as you can. Exercise every day. See if your weight can be maintained as it should and have a meaningful purpose of your life, in your life. If you'll do all these things, you won't have to be focusing so much on what 
hormone do I need to supplement with? Who's my anti-aging doctor that's going to be able to fix this for me? Do it yourself. It's the safe way. It's the natural way. It's nature's way.